and welcome to Down to Earth. Our question this week is another great one from one of our viewers, and they want to know, what does it mean to side dress with fertilizer? It's a great question. It's an, actually an agricultural term for when you plant crops into rows and hills and have furrows between them. It means to apply to the side of the plant, obviously, with side dressing. You can apply anywhere around the plant, though, around the root zone. Again, as I said, this is a term that referred back to hills and furrows for farmers. But normally, most of us don't have hills and furrows in our backyard garden. And so the side dress term, we can take a little bit loosely. When you add fertilizer to the soil, once plants are already growing, and you add manure, that can burn tender new leaves on plants. So that's why we dress to the side or a little bit further from the plant, and so we don't burn the plants. This little boost of fertilizer gives vegetable crops a little bit of extra energy when they are about to start flowering or fruiting or whatever they're going to do to give you the vegetable or fruit that you're looking for. For example, broccoli, you want to side dress when the head begins to form. And on tomatoes, when blooms first appear, give your plants a little extra boost of fertilizer to get it through and give it a little extra energy to produce fruit for you usually right around the time a plant has a growth spurt. Peas, beans, and other legumes don't really need a side dressing and fertilizer because they have a great relationship with a soil bacteria called rhizobium, which allows them to produce nitrogen for themselves in the soil. And actually these plants are a great crop rotation in between your other plants to allow them to add some nitrogen into the soil for you. Our plant this week is Muhlenbergia capillaris regal mist or called pink muley grass. This grass is a clumping ornamental grass and those are being used more commonly here. It gets about three feet tall and three feet wide, which makes it sort of a medium sized ornamental grass. Its flowers add one to two feet to the height. It's native to East Texas, but it's taken the Southwest by storm because it's so drought tolerant and it's just really a beautiful plant. It has gorgeous deep pink flowers in the fall. Many of our flowers, uh, plants flower in the spring, and so it's really great to have something really pretty in your garden in the fall. Those seed heads do remain on the plant into the winter, adding winter flowers and a sculptural element to your garden in the winter. It's also not as invasive as some of our other ornamental plants. It, as other ornamental plants, it does go into winter dormancy here, but it's hardy to negative 10, making it a really great plant. In the late winter, you want to cut this, as you do other ornamental grasses, almost to the ground so that it can reinvigorate itself from the roots. It does thrive in full sun and will take reflected heat, making it great for those areas on the south and the west side of your house. It can also take a little bit of light shade, so it's very flexible. It's adapted to a wide range of soil types, from clay to sand. It's very drought tolerant. And with all of the clay in our soil here, this does make a great addition to our plant palette. To do in your garden this week, you want to wrap up any pruning quickly. We're getting sort of late on that, and our plants are getting ready to bud out, especially our trees. You also want to start any warm season vegetable seeds indoors if you haven't already done that. Plants like tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, and other warm season vegetables. You also can go ahead and apply pre-emergent weed killer in your lawns to take care of any weeds that are going to grow from seed here pretty quick. We'd love to hear from you. Send us your question or plant of the week from your garden. Just go to klru.org ctg.